Throughout the history of Beast Worm, there have been many people who have helped to push the limits of what everyone thought was possible. These people have put their all into the game, broke barriers, and met milestones some can only dream of. This is the story of those people. Game release, March 21st, 2018. So obviously, in the first, like, couple days of the game, it's impossible to know who is in the lead, at what times, with how much money. So I will skip forwards to the first real leader that I can find. March 25th. Four days after the game release, the first real leader appears. This is James Up 2. He's the first guy to hit 10 million honey. And actually, I did a little bit of an interview with this guy. Apparently, he was so good back then, on it messaged him and told him to slow down or else he might get banned. But he would lose his spot on about the 29th of March. So, OO Lynx OO is the guy who passes James when they're both at around 23 million total honey. And Lynx would hold the spot for a couple days, pretty much doubling honey every day. So, March 31st, 55 million. March 31st, 84 million. April 1st, Lynx would lose his spot to RH. AAA, 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 A, at 116 million honey. It was about at this time that Valcarni would start playing and grinding hard. April 4th, RHAAAA had more than 134 million. And on April 5th, RHAAAA had more than 151 million. But on April 6th, RHAAAA would be passed by Valcarni, who officially would take the number one honeymaker spot and starts his run to 1 billion honey. Valcarni would be temporarily passed by Chris Romanis for like 8 days when he was at around 420 million honey. He would then pass Chris back at 572 million honey. One week after 572, he was at 819. One day after 819, he was at 900. And on May 1st, one month after the game came out, Valcarni would officially become the first person to make 1 billion honey. And he wouldn't stop there. He would continue making upwards of 100 million a day for the next couple of days. On May 6th of 2018, our favorite player, SD Mittens, would pass Valcarni at around 1.6 billion honey. And she would take that spot, keep on pushing like we've never seen before. On August 1st, SD Mittens would hit 100 billion total honey, receiving the first game wide message from Onnit. And on December 15th, she would hit 1 trillion total honey, receiving yet another message from on it and her own code as a congratulations. On December 19th, 2018, the Beesmas update would come out, introducing many new things to the game, like festive bean, and more importantly, festive beans. Making the game 100% pay to win, festive beans provided 100% instant conversion for up to 30 minutes. And back when they came out, they could be shared between players. And best of all, you could buy five of them on a new account. So, players like Oppo Cyrus would just make tons of alts and buy tons of Festa Beans on them and share them with their main. And using this Festa Bean strategy, Oppo Cyrus and other players were able to make 250 billion honey in just one day. As Beesmas goes on, the amount of honey SD Mittens is making starts declining drastically, allowing TTLLVR and Gummidin to start catching up. And on June 11th, after SD Mittens was number one for almost a year, Gummidin would officially pass SD Mittens as the number one honey maker at 5.4 trillion total honey. And also, just a couple hours after that, Zlib would pass Gummidin. And then, on the 15th, Gummidin would once again pass Zlib and starts the OP OMG No Way grind to 10 trillion total honey. On September 13th, 2019, after grinding hard for months, Gummidin would hit 10 trillion all-time honey, getting the third game-wide message from Onnit in the history of Beastworm, and a code to congratulate him. When the Mythic Bees update would come out in December, Gummidin would take advantage of the typo in the Infernal Ring. When it first came out, Infernal Ring would convert 1% of capacity instead of 1% of convert total, which allowed him to skyrocket up in honey like never before, using up to 21 gifted spices at one point. On December 31st of 2019, Zlib would make over 8 trillion honey in one day, showing everyone how powerful spicy bees plus festive beans really were. 
On January 9th, 2020, Slib would repass Gumbinin at around 29 trillion honey after setting the world record and making 10 trillion honey in a single day. A short month later, on February 1st, Gumbinin would once again pass Slib with pretty much exactly 40 trillion honey. After being passed, Slib would stop playing, allowing the number 3 player, McProsif, to move up to number 2 on February 10th. On March 21st, everybody's least favorite player, McProsif YouTube, would pass Gumbinin at around 52 trillion. After being passed, Gumbinin would announce he was officially quitting VSORM Simulator as he was mad that Prosif was using macros and didn't want the game to come to that. A couple months later, June 6th, 2020, the Supreme Star Amulet update would come out, introducing six new passes into the game, allowing people to increase their earnings tenfold, also allowing people to pick high colors and adding more RNG into the game, and also adding mythic meteors. Ironically, mythic meteors were the one feature that weren't tested in the test realm, and they were also the one feature that broke the game. Remember this for later. On June 13th, Gulo would pass McProsif at 73 trillion honey. On June 14th, Mr. Mosquito would pass Gula. On June 15th, Gula would retake the number one spot for Mosquito. And on June 16th, Mosquito would once again surpass Gula, ending Gula's number one leaderboard run. And then 11 days later, Mosquito would hit the 100 trillion honey milestone, getting the fourth game wide message and receiving a code to congratulate him. Mosquito was able to make a lot off of Beesmus by simply just boosting every day and staying consistent. The honey would start to add up really quickly. On August 26, 2020, a player named Elaw made 116 trillion honey in a single day. How did he do it? Well, you see, remember how earlier I mentioned Mythic Meteors broke the game? They broke the game because they collected an insane amount of pollen and all that pollen was instantly converted. Elaw figured this out. Then he kind of just got a self guide and an OP boost going, and then he just got three of his friends to go hit every single meteor. And then this is what happened. This is also the only boost that ever caused Onnit to do an emergency nerf, but the damage was already done. Jumping a couple months ahead to December 25th, 2020. The Beast Miss update would release, and Elaw would overtake Masito the same day at around 650 trillion honey. How did he make so much honey so quick? Well, turns out Elaw was just really good at Beast Swarm, but also he did the science and figured out how a red hive works and made it even better. This skill combined with festive beans was too much for anybody else to handle, literally allowing him to make upwards of 200 trillion a day. On December 30th, five days after Beast Miss came out, Elol would hit 1 quadrillion total honey. The fifth ever game wide message from Onnit would appear to congratulate him. However, Elol would never receive a code for this milestone. The player right behind Elol at the time, Gifted Ty, was also using the same strategies as Elol and continued grinding, staying in number 2 right behind him. Until February 17th, that is. On this day, Gifted Ty would pass Elol. He ended up making 381 trillion honey in a single day. However, this victory would be short-lived. On the 27th of February, Gifted Ty would be removed from the leaderboards. He was removed because he was abusing data loss for just about everything. Wins, mutations, you name it. He even figured out a way to dupe festive beans. Usually when Beesma sends, a lot of people stop playing. However, Riaz 1987 has a goal to become number one, and he wants to hit that goal badly. So he continues boosting tons off of Beesmus. On August 26th, 2021, Riaz would finally reach his goal, passing Elol and becoming number one with just over two quadrillion honey. On December 26th, a day after Christmas, the Beesmus update would finally release, introducing two new bees, the Precise Bee and the Buoyant Bee. Those would revolutionize many, many things. Also, new tools and a thing called Nectar was added. All three of these things would greatly change the meta to the game allowing people to make much more honey. After just a couple days of Beesmus, on January 4th, Elol would retake his spot from Riaz. After the addition of buoyant bees, blue hives became extremely good for macroing. This allowed Elol and other top players to make over 100 trillion honey a day by doing nothing. Later that Beesmus, on the 27th of February, e Ices was able to show everyone actually how much blue hives were able to do by becoming the first person to ever make one quadrillion honey in a single day. 
Just four days later, on March 1st, Elaw would become the first person to ever make 10 quadrillion total honey. He wouldn't receive a game-wide message or a code for this achievement, but he would break the leaderboard. Later that month, on the 27th, after a full day of boosting, just some noob would just barely pass Elaw. However, on the 29th, just two days later, Elaw would repass him. This is the last time to date that the number one honeymaker spot has switched holders. But the story is not quite over. In the past year, many players have pushed the limits of what everyone thought was possible. Whether it be Mikey being the first person to make 10 quadrillion in a day, or Pythor being the first person to make 10 quadrillion in a single boost. In this time, Elol has managed to make 77 quadrillion more honey. And as of writing this, he's sitting on top of the board with 90. This is where he'll sit for the rest of time. Because on April 30th, 2023, Elol would announce his official retirement from Beast Army, leaving behind a legacy to inspire others. Will he ever be passed? Most definitely. Next beast is for sure. My point is that he helped to write the pages of history, and now with him gone, that very job could be up to you. Hey guys, it's me in the end card. Um, I just want to say quickly, this is going to be my last Beast Swarm video. I guess you can kind of consider it a tribute to Beast Swarm. I've made a lot of good memories, met a lot of great people that I'll still talk to, and I'll continue making content just on other games. The Beast Worm whole thing has gotten really dry for me. And I just don't want to continue with it. So, see you in my next one. Mm -hmm.